it's Cassie with Southern Makes. This is episode 16. It is May 22nd, 2020. I am coming to you from a town outside of Nashville, Tennessee called Murfreesboro, where I live, and it's a gloomy, rainy day, and it's supposed to stay that way for a few weeks, so I thought for the first time I would record during the daytime, but it's kind of not even making a difference. But hi, this is a crafty podcast where I talk about knitting and crochet mostly, but sometimes cross stitch and just kind of anything that I get up to at the end, sometimes books, movies, TV shows, general life things. So yeah, um, hi, Uh, nice to meet you if you're new and nice to see you again if you're returning or if you've watched before. Hi, I have a lot to talk about today. I'm really excited. Yeah, so let's just get into it. I want to start with my crochet projects. So the first cute little project that took, I mean, maybe two days of crocheting is the Pineapple Lace Halter Crop Top by Melissa Beauregard. And I've got it like around this, but it is, it's a halter. So it's crocheted with DK weight yarn I used a four millimeter hook. I think I might have used a 3.75 on the cups and then a four millimeter for this pretty, hit my yarn ball winder, for this pretty uh, pineapple lace. And what you do is you put a button on the back and fasten it so it doesn't hang open like that. And you fasten it and yeah, so it's just a little summer uh, top. Not sure that it's going to fit me. I The back story on that is that I started working out and I want to lose some weight for health things and just to feel better about myself and all. So that is kind of like my little treat to myself. Like you make this and then you'll be able to go out and wear it confidently. I mean, I know I could wear it now, but you know, anyway, I'm rambling. <laughs> That is a free pattern on Ravelry also, and like I said, it's really easy and fast because, I mean, there's not much there, but yeah, and you just put a button, and the yarn I used was, uh, the DK weight was Drops Nord. I thought I had some. Obviously, this isn't the color. It's like a blue color, but it's this. It's a wool alpaca polyamine mix, and I really prefer it to my typical alpaca or flora that I always use. The flora I think is a mix of wool and alpaca and then the alpaca is just alpaca. This is the same like wooliness, the same kind of like wool feel and smell, but the polyamide kind of like makes it smooth, a little bit smoother and you get a little bit less yardage with this one, but not by like any substantial amount and it's still affordable. I think this one is a little bit more expensive and when I say that maybe like 50 cents or a dollar more than the others. So in American uh, US dollars probably, I can't really remember, 240 or 350, three dollars and 50 cents. So and these are little 50 gram but I use these for everything. <laughs> Y'all probably if you've been here before you know this. So the second crochet project that I have been really excited about is the Lao Cardigan, hope I'm saying that right, by Eleven Handmade. It is crochet, it's a pay pattern on Ravelry. She is a beautiful, beautiful designer. Everything that she designs is amazing. A lot of the times people just, they remark on, oh my God, that's crochet. Yes, yes it is, and it's beautiful. But I had some problems with this and I've tried or I've attempted to make one of her patterns before, the goldenrod sweater. And uh, it was the second or first sweater I've ever attempted to make adult wise. I've made some baby sweaters without a lot of issues. So I thought like I kind of understood the construction, but I ran out of yarn for that and my stitch count was off in like a really weird way where I couldn't fix it. So I kind of like gave up on that because the yarn was discontinued anyway, so there was really nothing I could do. It's like a variegated, very specific colorway, so I couldn't just match something with it at that point. I'm staring at it. It's in the box. I can't, like, throw it away or, like, frog it. The yarn, it's so, like, sticky that it's, like, impossible to frog, too. 
so yeah anyway this is the second design that I've attempted and the first one that I've completed by her here it is so it's an open cardigan there are no buttons with a pretty little ribbed band around it and my ends aren't woven in because I'll tell you so the design comes on the front the sun's kind of washing that out so I had to pause to have some water so this is a bottom up crochet cardigan so the pattern calls for I can't talk too much about the pattern but I'll try to get out like what I need to get out that I thought kind of was like problematic and if you guys have made it or you want to make it we can chat about it maybe I'm just missing something but it's a bottom up and I already know I don't really enjoy bottom up things so that could be playing into this seriously but you hold two strands of lace weight yarn together to create like a marled effect and a faded effect as you go up so like her sample I believe it starts with a dark blue and like fades into the light blue and then fades into like lighter color at the top I wanted to use hand dyed yarn for half of this all of it but I could I ended up not like being able to color match and all I could do was fingering weight because it was more effective cost wise and also I just couldn't find any lace weight that matched this so just to talk about the yarn this bottom here is from hand dyed by Maelstrom Fiber Arts. It says it's magenta and the sun's kind of like making it look pink but in person I think it looks red and is so saturated and pretty so I have been looking for like a red to go with this that I hand dyed sometime last year it's a BFL base that I wanted to test when I was going to uh, start dyeing yarn so I didn't I don't crochet or like work with much red so I didn't have anything and I couldn't find anything so this was perfect so I did that and then the tan taupe color at the top is some uh, fingering weight that I bought from Michaels like years back and I don't know what it is but it's really nothing special it is soft um, yeah so that is the color and I would if I had to do it again I'd say follow her instructions eat and do it with two lace weights and marl them together or just do a solid cardigan I really liked the faded look so I wanted to attempt it and I don't love love how I did it you're supposed to when you introduce the color there's tutorials out there on how to like fade and Andrea Mowry I know for sure like has she's got her so faded that I'll talk about in a second it for me but um, you do one one two two all you just alternate in a specific way but I kind of like gave up on that you can see here I just did that one that and then because I also didn't want to run out of yarn I only had two skeins of this and one skein of this I thought I had more of this but I didn't and I still had to do the sleeves as well so while we're on sleeves the sleeves are crocheted bottom up flat and separate and then you seam them on after you're done with them and this is my seam for the sleeve and this is where it's joined I'll talk about this and I have to say I hated doing the sleeves flat and separate and then seaming them back on it was not fun I don't know I just it was so much extra work it felt like than just attaching like you normally do because the what I've done mostly is just you attach your yarn here and then just like work and that way you can measure it too as you go instead of like having I don't know so I didn't love that but I do I did match the color fading on the two sleeves so it's like faded as best as I could do it and I didn't follow the pattern on the sleeve so I can't comment on that I just cast on or started with the a 3.5 hook and measured my wrist and then just kept going I only decreased a little bit right here and then just kept going on going on going all the same I didn't decrease anymore yeah so and then I seamed it on so they're pretty tight and I don't know this hole right here so the construction you knit the, this back piece and then kind of cut your yarn and then go over here and do this and then the other so I couldn't figure that out in the beginning so I wasn't really sure but if I had to do it again I would have done something differently to not have this I'm gonna seam this up I haven't decided if I'm gonna redo the sleeves to make them a little bit bigger 
that's why I haven't seamed it up yet. Otherwise, I'm just going to uh, mattress stitch this and seam it together. That way, there's not a gaping hole in my armpit. But yeah, okay. So the one thing that tripped me up was since this was a bottom up piece, you start with this band, the bottom rib band, and mine was so long, so big that I thought this is not right. So I measured it and I had gauge crazily, crazily, crazily enough. I had gauge, I measured it. I got to, uh, let's see. I was, I'm doing that. I was making the XL size. So I got to the stitch count for the medium or for the XL size, but I got for the stitch count for the medium, but it was already measuring the length of the XL size. So, so I had stitches already enough stitches and then I was supposed to make more, but that would have, and it was already big. So that would have made it so much bigger. So what I did was I left it at the medium uh, size and then you turn your work and you make your base stitches in this. So I just like every now and then plugged in more stitches to equal the amount that you needed for the XL. So I would recommend doing that instead of like ripping it back. It turned out that it's not that big. It looked big. I don't know if it's because it like shrunk in because you use a smaller hook to start and then you go up. But um, yeah, that is what I did. It worked for me. I would recommend doing that. I'm 100% of the thought that you don't always have to, if something's like kind of wrong, like assess the situation. And if you don't, if it's not like a, a detrimental, like the whole design is going to be like messed up problem, just make a few adjustment, adjustments and just keep going. Because the amount of work sometimes that you've done is so crazy and you I mean, there's no point in like taking it back apart. Like sometimes I'll be watching a podcast and people will rip out entire sleeves of their sweaters just to redo them because they're off by like two stitches or something. And I'm like, who is going to notice those two stitches unless you just can't live with it or something. I mean, I just don't get it. That's not me, but yeah. So I would recommend doing that. And then the other thing that I would recommend is this band is supposed to be crocheted separately. So you just make the band and then you have to attach it the whole way around the cardigan. When I read that, I thought, oh my God. And I think it's one of the last things that you do. Maybe if not the last thing, I thought, I am not doing this. Should I just not do a ribbing? What do I do? I was like frantic because I did not want to crochet that separately and then attach it. So what I did was I remembered way back when I first started crocheting, I made a tablet cover and they had ribbing at the top. So what you did, you cut your yarn, fasten off, like do all your stuff and then you take you take a slip knot attach it right here I'm sure there are tutorials for this and I think this is a much easier way to do like a uh, separate ribbing attach it here chain up as much as tall as you want your ribbing to be so I didn't mind half the size of what she wanted it to be because I just didn't want like this big block of color since I did mine with the red and then you chain one extra and then go back. So these are half double crochets. So I just went back down, uh, slip, slip two times, turned, and then back up. Chain, turn, go down, slip, slip, turn, go back up. So I did that all the way around. And here's the, is this the outside? Here's the outside. I like this pretty, you have to stay consistent with where you're slip, slip stitching and uh, be mindful of your chains. So I like the little uh, pretty detail that, that happened there as I was doing that. I really like that. So it was much easier so I didn't have to attach it later. I just, it was attaching as I went. So I would highly, highly recommend doing that. I mean, you can do that with anything. If somebody, want, if the pattern says do it separately, you can just do it on it and save yourself a lot of grief and stress because I cannot imagine wrangling this long thing all the way across this heavy heavy sweater but yeah other than that I think those are your personal preference points nothing bad about the pattern I did really love doing this is this not so gorgeous the leaf leaves pattern I love doing that their uh, back post travels and doubles 
um, kind of like the the honeycomb uh, pullover that I made a while back. I love those designs. I think they're so pretty and it's so effective, especially in person to see. It's just stunning. So I just love her. I love her work. I love her patterns. They're well written. Everything is technically correct. Um, you're not like stuck halfway through a row and you're like, what am I doing? Everything's fine. She is a wonderful designer. So highly recommend if you like crochet projects. They just eat up so much yarn. It's a lot of yarn in this. But yeah, let's talk about knitting. Hi. So I don't think I mentioned all of these are FOs except for one thing. So I am fulfilling my goal of getting everything off of my needles that way I have no guilty feelings whatsoever starting all the new sweaters so the first one and probably the one I'm kind of the most excited about is folksy by Melody Hoffman so this is a knit sweater with bubbles and little flea stitches I call them I decided to do them all the way on the whole sweater the pattern just has them here so I did them on the sleeves I'm so proud look they match it matches up with the sweater but I wanted to do them all over and it was really fun I think it made it go by a little faster weirdly even though I mean it's the same it's a knit stitch too but it also I was carrying the yarn behind I'll show you my floats then see I was carrying the yarn behind so it kind of adds a little bit more warmth honestly to it as well Excuse me, there's the floats. I love floats. So this is a top-down uh, sweater paid pattern on Ravelry. You cast on with your contrasting color, which I love, and then you, you just go down and work the, the color. There are German short rows in this one, and the cuffs are the yellow, and then the bottom too. I haven't blocked this yet. I'm gonna do a couple of different sweaters all in the same day, so I'm just waiting. But yeah, once I block it, I made the XL size, I think. I wanted it to be pretty, I have a lot of positive ease because I want it to be like one of my more casual sweaters. That's the back. And I did this out of Drops Nord as well, all of it. So the, the golden, the cream, and the, I guess this is tan, tan more brownie tan are all the drops nor the polyamine alpaca and wool and this is pretty woolly smells woolly <laughs> smells woolly too and these bobbles uh i did the knit bobbles so i didn't grab a crochet hook to do them and they don't look perfect but at the same time like this sweater wasn't ever meant to be perfect it's just meant to be like my comfy cozy like throw on all the time over leggings sweater so i kind of like that like rough look that they have but there's a lot of good tutorials for the knitting one, but also for crochet bobbles. And for some reason, the crochet bobbles just look a lot more consistent and kind of like neat compared to like the craziness of the knit bobbles. But that is folksy. I have been working on this or I started it a while ago and then kind of put it down. So it has taken a long time, but once I started working, working on it, it really didn't take very long at all to finish. And this is probably the very, very first sweater that I've ever made that has enough length for me, especially after I block it. So I'm excited to block that and see how much it kind of like grows. See if I can like get some extra length so I can cover my booty when I wear it with leggings, hopefully. Okay, next thing is the V-Back Tee by Jamie Hoffman. So this is a little knitted shirt. And uh, as the name says, it is a pay pattern on Ravelry, but the V is supposed to, be, you could, it's reversible, she says, but the V is supposed to be on the back, hence the V back tee. But I wanted it because things that, all my sweaters are like crew neck or like, um, what's it called? Boat necks. And it's, it's okay on me, but like it's more flattering because I have really big shoulders and a bigger bust to have like this space open. So I want to make uh, more knit things really want to make the v-neck bo boxy by Hohe one day. I just don't think I can do all that stock in it, but we'll see. But anyway, so I needed that because I want it to be a little bit more flattering. And then, so this pretty, I've got to show you this. Can you see the detail to going down the center? 
goes all the way down. I love designs that have that, like the Weekender has that, like a little like pearl bump. So pretty. So it's got that and you, so you're doing your increases. You can see the yarn is going up in like a V. You're doing like increases and decreases and stuff on the side. And she had you do it on the side, she said, because hers is faded. So she fades her colors. So it's like a little bit more hidden while you're doing your color transitions. I did this all out of the same yarn, which is from my favorite, Miss Pam at Bay Horse Yarns. This is the same uh, indie dyer that I, my Barnwood colorway that I'm obsessed with, She that she dyes. And, but that was on her Show Horse Sock, which was a nylon and superwash merino blend. This is on her Tall Sock Space, which is just a superwash merino blend. And this colorway is called Apple Harvest. It's so pretty. So I originally got, I got four of these. They're 438 yarn, yards per 100 grams. I got four because I was gonna make a so faded with them. Not faded, but just like with this, because I like the pattern. But I saw this feedback to you while I was going to get that pattern and decided to make this instead. And this only took two skeins, so now I have two extra skeins, and I'm not sure. So my issue is that my shoulders are so big, and I thought this was gonna fit me, but it more so goes like off my shoulders, like it's my shoulders are too big and it doesn't fit. And I've already blocked it. I haven't woven in the end yet because I'm not sure if I'm going to rip it out and make the so faded anyway. I'm not sure. But I did really enjoy the pattern. Um, the one thing is I've made so many sweaters, I got cocky. So I usually keep my beginning of round marker in once I get to the body and you're just going round and round. And that's more as like a more like a progress keeper for me than like here's the beginning of the round because it really doesn't matter. You're going around and around doing the same thing. There's no more increases or anything. And this is where you should read the pattern, Cassie. But I didn't and there were more short rows at the bottom. <clears throat> So if you can see the back is shorter, my back, the, like the part that I would wear it cause I'm going to wear it like this is shorter where normally clothing items are longer in the back and there were short rows to like kind of like compensate to make them more the same length. And I had removed all the markers. I didn't know where I was at. I was kind of like frustrated and did not want to sit down and like take the time to like figure out where I was and like place back the markers to be able to do the short rows correctly at that time. So I didn't and I do kind of regret that. But when I tried it on, this was more of an issue, the top than the bottom. I kind of didn't mind that the back was short like that. So, but yeah, I might rip it out yet because this yarn is so precious. She's based, by the way, in California, in the United States. She's got excellent customer service. She donates, uh, I think it's 10% of her proceeds to a charity that she likes. And uh, she's really fast shipping. I just really like her. You should follow her on Instagram. I will link her here and also down in the description bar. Da, 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 da. This is the Tress Cow Jumper by Hannah Dervo, which is a free pattern on Ravelry that I saw on Sandra Paul's podcast. She's Cherry Heart on YouTube and I think Sandra HRT on Instagram. Everything that she does, I love. I've done so many things because I've seen her do them. And her latest, um, it's a blanket that she saw in a magazine and she designed the pattern because she couldn't find uh, the, the design. And I really want to make that. It's a crochet blanket. Anyway, she had posted that she made this and I really loved it and it was free. Another kind of like simple raglan <clears throat> style sweater. So it's supposed to be cropped, but I made it full length with no short rows or anything. So it's kind of like just a rectangle. Can you see? And uh, I held... The yarn is Yarn B 44th Street, which is like an acrylic and I think polyamide blend um, from Hobby Lobby. And it's the last that I'll, I will use from there. So I, yeah. And then I held it double with Drops Kid Silk Mohair, which is 100% Kid Silk 
it's a mohair and it makes this like super fluffy really pretty um, fabric as compared to I have this is like blush pink it's showing up pretty accurate it's a little bit more pink and less like uh, peach but <clears throat> I have it's just a cream in the same the 44th Street the fuzzy and I was knitting that with a four millimeter hook for to make a second no frills sweater and I have it I guess I keep looking it's over there but I don't want to give it up it kind of like once I put it on it looks fine while you're knitting but then once I put it on it was kind of like fish netty so I wouldn't recommend that yarn it's a it's a fingering weight honestly but I guess because it's so like fluffy that it just doesn't knit up right I should have gone down to like a 3.5 and then up to my size but I started making that before she uh, released petite knit released their bigger sizes so I think I was making the biggest size already so I didn't want to like do the math and like do that anyway I like this one much better I love this pretty uh, raglan and it was interesting the the neck is just a pearl knit pearl uh, situation and it's the same for the bottom you do the pearl knit pearl to get the pretty pretty design on the bottom but for the sleeves I decided to go for quarter length sleeves and just my two by two rib cuff because that's just what I like and it holds better on my arms and I figured like this is so cozy and warm because of the mohair that I wanted quarter length sleeves so I don't just burn all the way up because we have cold weather here but it's not like you know I need to like have four wool sweaters on and all that so I did that and yeah I really really love it I don't know if I'm gonna block it because I'm just weird about blocking acrylic things like excuse me it's not gonna do much and this is another like just cozy cozy one as well but I did want to this inspired me I'm definitely going to make and I saw um Julia with the happy knitting podcast post today that the no frills I don't want to buy that pattern those patterns anymore but it's just a simple uh open cardigan no frills cardigan I think and with mohair I could probably find another simple cardigan pattern but I really want to do that like the double mohair situation with full length sleeves but cardigan so that way I can have the sleeves but then still have the open cardigan so it's not like suffocating and still cozy so I think that might be like on the horizon for me because that sounds amazing and I'm like itching to make cardigans right now like that's all I want to do so that's it I believe for my finished object so I'll talk about the one that I'm working on and then a couple of acquisitions yeah, and then we'll be done. So this is my uh, one whip that I'm actively working on. Still have a rod up, but this is the Bright Feather Sweater by Knit Love Wool or Jen Steingas. That's the back. Here's the front. So this is a rolled neckline, which is like you just cast on and start knitting and it just rolls for you. And then you have a couple of short rows just to make the back dip a little bit and then your color work, and then you split for the sleeves, and then you just work the body. And the sleeves also have a little pretty um, pattern like this on the bottom of them. They're like bell sleeves, they're open, and I think they have a rolled hem on the sleeves as well. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna do my two by two ribbing. But I am still gonna do the color cup chart on the bottom. I love it when sleeves have stuff on the bottom, and full length sleeves. So the yarn, again, is Drops Nord, but I'm holding the cream uh, color together with the cr more cream mohair. Drops Kid Silk mohair, so you see how fluffy. And I'm not sure if like this is puckering or if it's meant to do this because it's so consistent. I'm not sure. So I need to go back and look at the pattern and see, or like, I mean, if it's not supposed to be there, I think I can block it out like that. But I copied it just like I did with the Melody Hoffman's. I loved the sample was kind of knit in these colors and I really liked it. So on the camera it kind of like washes out, but it is a light gray and then the cream and white. And I just think it's so pretty. And I have powered through this. I don't know what size needles. They're at four, four, I'm using four millimeter. Yeah, but I powered through this. I knit almost all of this yesterday. Like, I don't know what's gotten into me. I'm just like, 
lip smit. But yeah, I'm really enjoying that. I have like eight of her patterns that I'm working on. And I love using the little drops because I wind it into balls. And they only take like a couple minutes to wind up and they're so like fun to play with. But yeah, I have a lot of her patterns so I need to get cracking because I need to make some stuff and be like super ready for this winter. So now I'll just talk to you about my acquisitions. The first thing is I kind of posted on my Instagram. If you follow, I will leave all those like social media links, which is just Instagram and Ravelry, but down below, but I posted about my favorite, favorite knitting needles, which are the Chiagu red lace needles. So what it is, is um, this is steel and then the cable is steel as well with nylon coating on it. So like they're flexible, but they don't like, they don't hold their shape. They are flexible, but they're like not that like so flexible that you can't like keep control of them. And then the uh, needle is sharp, but it's not going to like draw blood from you. Like you can poke yourself and it does hurt. I have like on my finger, I keep hitting it. Like while I'm knitting, I knit uh, continentally. So while I'm knitting, the one needle like keeps like grinding in that one spot. But that's just a me problem. I like the 40 inch cable because it is flexible so well that you can do magic loop. So I decided to get, this one is a 3.25 and this is a 3.5. I have a three and a 3.75 and a four. Those are like what I use the most for sweaters. And since I use the same yarn mostly all the time, I really don't have to do a gauge swatch. I just kind of know like which needles to pick up, but I only have the 40 inch cable. That way I can do neck ribbing and arm ribbing and all of that with the same needles. So I don't have to fiddle with those little tiny DPNs that I can't stand because I got the four inch ones instead of like the six inch ones. Those two inches make so much difference. But yeah, I like this much, much better just to be able to have like everything. My dream is to have the interchangeable set. It's just uh, expensive. So maybe one day I'll get the interchangeable set. But for right now, these are amazing. The joins are flawless. I'm so much faster with these. I was trying to make my Grace cardigan with uh, some doll, like just some from like Michaels and it was so slow and so frustrating. And then I got these and started and that thing was done in like a week. And I mean, it's all about the needles. And then finally I was like, I'm enlightened. It is about the needles. Like it is. And these, um, I think anywhere from like 10 to $13. I got these on Amazon. Uh, so the ones from like Michael's and Hobby Lobby and Joann's, like sometimes they'll be like $5, but those bamboo ones are like 15, I think like anywhere from like five to $15 for some needles. And they're not good. Like you would be so much faster if you did this or I can't say, I can't vouch for these, but like Haya Haya Sharps or Lika, any of the other ones, I think those are a little bit more expensive, but you could have these for the same price that you're getting the ones at your local store. Just shop around and see. And some people like have discount codes and, or they run sales, stuff like that. So I highly recommend these. They are my favorite. I will always use them. I don't even think I'm going to until like I can experiment with other needles. I'm just gonna stick with these because they work so well. So the needles and then I went on a binge for the first time. I'm so excited to say this, other than my Bay Horse yarn. Look at these pretties. So I put in an order from uh, Stacy with Stress Knits and Originally, I wanted to do a so faded with this. Now, since I have the cardigan bug, I think I'm going to do the so faded cardigan. So, I got four. So, this is my fade. Maybe I'll try to put a picture in. So, this is all of them around her favorite base, which is an 80 20 blend of superwash merino and nylon. You get 400 yards with each of them. So, I'll tell you the colors. This one's grubby which is like a really pale pink with speckles of um, gray. There's a little bit, I guess that's like, I don't know if that's intentional or if it's just some of the dye, but speckles of gray, some orange. But the orange is like so subtle. You see that little, like I wouldn't even say like orange, but that's grubby. 
And then this one is Prudence. So it's another like light pink, almost barely there. And then the speckles on this one are just like a little bit more like shock factor. There's a really pretty one. So like purples and reds, so pretty. It reminds me of like a sunset, almost like a really like light sunset. This one's my second favorite. This is Rattle. So like this base is pretty uh, pink purpley with the same kind of like orange and purple and blue uh, speckles kind of. And then this one's my favorite. This is Dahlia. So it's more of like a solid. It does have a little bit of variation in it but not a lot. It's more of like a solid. And the second she showed this like a while ago, I was like, oh my God, I have to have this. So I'm really excited that I got all four of these. And I do think I'm going to make the so faded cardigan with them instead of a sweater. If I have enough, I'll have to check the yardage. But if I don't, I might like just order one more. Maybe. I don't know. She's got a lot of pretty colors and I watch her podcast here. I really like her. So yeah, uh, that's basically it for the podcast. I'm still reading um, Sarah J. Mass, but I finished her A Court of Thorns and Roses series, and now I'm on the Throne of Glass. I'm on the seventh book, and so far it is one of the better out of the series. I have to talk to y'all about it later because this has been long enough, but that's basically all I've been doing and listening to music, and yeah, I'm just trying to get through this quarantine time that we're all going through. I wasn't able to start back work, so I'm just here knitting and enjoying life. But thanks to y'all for watching, and like I said, I'll leave everybody's links below. Maelstrom Fiber Arts, Bay Horse Yarn, and the, the sweaters that I talked about so you can go and look. And then my Instagram and my Ravelry, if you're curious about anything that I said and like I didn't explain it, I try to keep my Ravelry project pages pretty good. They're not the best, but pretty good. And I'm always open if you just want to ask me questions or ask me anything, you can message me on Ravelry, Instagram, or here, or comment, or whatever you want to do. I hope y'all have a really good weekend and a good week, and I'll see you next time.